Uh, now we're going to ch chat with Jennifer Amit, who is the uh, Global Transportation Chief Executive with AECOM. If you're not familiar with AECOM, uh, they're a, a massive uh, engineering organization, also does uh, construction management all over the planet. Uh, Jennifer has a global responsibility. She looks after 14,000 uh, professionals around the world who are looking at uh, design uh, and transportation engineering. Um, she manages teams that deliver safe, sustainable, and cost-effective transportation systems. Uh, she's delivered major projects uh, in highway, rail, and uh, port sectors. Uh, she advises governments, um, and she has an enormous amount of responsibility with ACOM. Uh, Jennifer, maybe you can do a little bit better job uh, introducing yourself. My name is Jennifer Ahmed, and I have the privilege of leading uh, a global team of 15,000 individuals uh, for the world's largest design and engineering company. Uh, very pleased to be uh, uh, listed among Forbes' most admired companies in the world and number one in our sector. And we really partner with clients uh, in every stage of, of the transportation uh, life cycle and helping clients shape uh, transportation solutions to design, to oversee the construction, to be play a program management role. Um, and that often includes uh, embedding ESG strategies and helping our clients embed ESG into everything they're doing and also leveraging technology uh, to deliver modern transportation solutions that really improve the way we move people and goods around the world. So really, it's just mind blowing that you're, you look after a group of 15,000 people. I, I can't even imagine that. Uh, how did you get at this point in your career? Kind of maybe give a sense of the journey, uh, the the kind of steps that you've taken to get where to where you are, and then how you've developed as a leader to be able to lead such a large team. Sure. So I'll say in terms of the the fifteen thousand people strong, it's really our global scale that is the strength that Acom brings because. We have professionals that are deep within the communities in which we serve, like right there in Canada and in most continents around the world. But we also can internally leverage that global experience. So while we're working with our partners in Canada to advance transportation solutions, we've got the benefit of perspective from Hong Kong and Australia and New Zealand and the United States and Europe. And we bring that to bear for our clients uh, to get the best global thinking and match that with local relationships and knowledge to put the best transportation solution possible. Um, as far as I go, I, I'm a big project person. Um, I've had the opportunity to be at the helm at, at financing, developing, delivering, delivering and operating major multi-billion dollar transportation projects across the uh, surface, transit and maritime space. And so really what energizes me and certainly energizes my colleagues here at ACOM is working through the complexities of these large mega projects and bringing my experience over the last 25 uh, years in those types of messy projects to help clients maneuver through those projects and help to meet their uh, transportation and social outcomes uh, at the end of those projects. And so really, um, I caught the bug early in my career on a large uh, energy project and have spent most of my career since working through uh, these major multi-billion dollar projects. And I tell you, um, as I mentioned earlier in our conversation, there's just nothing that's more energizing and exciting than delivering through that complexity uh, to an outcome that really changes uh, the way people move and, and uh uh, changes communities. It's a real joy to have the pleasure to be able to work in that kind of in industry. Yeah, it's a really, uh, it is really a strength to be able to tap into that that uh, global knowledge base. Uh, and what an amazing perspective you must have. Uh, I'd love to talk to you for hours about that. I mean, just all the different projects you must be involved with around the world. Um, but today, I want to focus a little bit on uh, ESG, so environmental sustainability govern governance. I know uh, your company is very progressive on that front. Uh, you've kind of released some publications around the COP26 uh, announcements around uh, climate change and, and uh, governance internally with driving uh, improvements, uh, counting carbon, other things, measuring your own footprint. Um, maybe you can elaborate a little bit on that because we'd love to hear from you know leading companies around the world about what they're doing uh, to, to drive change and, and basically improve the world around us. Sure. Um, AECOM's sustainable legacy strategy really ensures that, that the work we do in partnership with our clients around the world leaves a positive lasting impact for our company, for our employees, for the communities that we serve, and, and for our planet. Uh, and when we look at that, how that, that rolls out, it's really in four key themes. It's making sure we embed sustainable development and resilience across everything that we do, uh, that we focus on improving social outcomes, 
uh, achieving net zero carbon emissions and enhancing governance. Uh, one of the best examples of this approach and how deeply embedded it is in our business is our Scope X project. This is a process that we use on all of our major projects uh, with the aim to reduce carbon impact by 50% on every major project that we are involved in. Um, we actually think that Scopex will be our really one of our biggest contributions to help in the climate emergency. And we are finding by setting that, by, that bar high in every project that we work on is a great way for us to have a lasting impact. Yeah, it's really, uh, it's, inspi it's inspiring really. I mean, the, the whole practice of design and engineering project management, it, it used to be, okay, we have this problem, we have this challenge. Uh, and now <clears throat> instead of just coming up with an engineered solution, you're looking at it differently saying, how can we create an engineered solution that uh, works effectively, is cost effective, uh, but also uh, has the least impact on our climate, on our environment, and potentially create some social good. So uh, it's kind of, it's it's great that that's sort of been in, uh, ingrained in your culture and you're trying to drive that uh, as part of the governance of the organization. So uh, really inspiring. Um, maybe you can talk a little bit about your uh, digital strategy uh, Acom is a leader uh, with the use of technology, driving innovation, uh, utilizing BIM and other other tools uh, day to day in your work practice. I'm sure you're also driving, and you probably have like a an innovation group and a laboratory and other things. Maybe you can kind of describe a little bit uh, the things that you do at a global scale to drive innovation across all of your work. Sure, I'll, I'll tell you, our digital strategy is is a big part of our ESG strategy globally. And we find that digital tools are um, a, a powerful tool that we have to help deliver on that ESG strategy. But when you look at digital ACOM, it's really the bridge between data and the physical infrastructure world. And it's shaping everything that we do as a company. If you think about how we operate internally in a digital environment and help to leverage talent across many continents, uh, ensuring that we have the digital tools to, to maximize and, and to, to fuel uh, that collaboration is a big part of, of how digital is changing the way that we work. Uh, if you look at how we actually uh, work in design, uh, we spend a lot of, of it, we've made a big investment in parametric design so that as we're working with clients on these major complex projects, there are elements of them that we can advance through parametric design that will help uh, ensure high quality, ensure that these designs can be delivered more efficiently um, through these major complex projects. Uh, if you look at the actual solutions that we deliver, we know that data is changing how we move people and goods. And so the extent at which we work with partners like Cavenu to deliver today uh, corridors that will accelerate the advancement of autonomous vehicles, um, as we're looking at artificial intelligence, that artificial intelligence and how we can use uh, AI to unlock productivity to, uh, productivity gains. Uh, when we look at our control rooms uh, around the world, how are we using data to help better manage traffic, to be able to bring in data around weather and changing conditions on the roadway to be able to provide a safer, more reliable and faster trip uh, for ultimately end customers. Uh, right now, we're doing a tremendous amount of work with clients looking at data and transparency in the supply chain. And how do we use data uh, to, to be able to, uh, to uh, address some of the challenges that we have in the supply chain today and ensure that goods arrive on time in a predictable manner? So it's really, you know, it's interesting in the last 25 years, it used to be transportation was about concrete and steel. Uh, and it still is. And we still have the most talented civil engineers in the world that are putting these solutions together. But really, when it comes to moving people and goods, it's that digital element that we transform how we move people and goods uh, in the product that we're ultimately delivering with our clients, but we also can use our technology and digital strategies to make ourselves more efficient uh, in everything that we're, we're delivering. Yeah, so that, that's, um, it's, it's pretty neat that, that you're using, uh, that you're driving new technologies and whatnot, but are you finding that your clients are responding uh, very strongly to this? Do they see that it's a differentiator? Uh, how important is driving digital technologies in your day-to-day -day work? And, and maybe you can give some examples about how you're, you're kind of structured as a, as a company. How are you driving that, that, uh, that culture of innovation on the ground? How do you share uh, your, your digital innovations across the business? Sure. I might, I might first uh, start with our clients. Uh, we are very fortunate at AACOM to work with some of the um, most ambitious and, and uh, uh, creative clients in the industry who recognize the power uh, of digital tools 
and the opportunity we have to drive better outcomes through technology. So we're fortunate with that. And AECOM is often involved in the very earliest stage of the projects so that we can help our clients, you know, uh, realize that vision uh, and ensure that, that the digital aspect is considered in terms of every project, every aspect of the project scope and execution. Uh, one of the great examples is right there in Canada with the Gordie Howe International Bridge. I mean, what a, a fantastic partnership and client that is and what a privilege it is for ACOM to have an opportunity to work on that project. And a few examples of Gordie Howe, um, you know, we established a robust common data environment that allowed all the different project elements to be translated into one digital language. And that really provided real time access to design data and facilitated immediate design reviews. You know, helped us identify issues early on and address them uh, in, a, in a quick way to keep the project moving. And this was done across many teams and offices and countries and all of that worked together to be able to keep the project uh, delivery and timetable on track. Uh, so a great example right there in Canada. In terms of our corporate structure, uh, we have actually uh, created a structure in our sort of think and act globally mandate here at ACOM to ensure that we have a matrix structure where digital flows down through all of our different sectors and all of our different regions. And so no matter where you are in the world, if you're sitting in Hong Kong, if you're sitting in Toronto, if you're sitting in Miami, you have access to our best global digital resources at your fingertips, no matter where they are on the planet. And so we've actually structured ourselves so that it's very convenient for a project manager on a project like Gordy Howe to be able to tap into expertise all over the world and to be able to, to learn and have the, the, the sharing of best practices from clients all over the world. So one last question before we wrap up, um, but like generally the Gordy Howe project was a P3 project and yeah. um, obviously a major project in the, the, the Canadian and uh, Ontario, Michigan market, obviously major border crossing. Um, the P3 model drives a lot of innovation. We were chatting a little bit about that before the interview. Yeah. Uh, from your international perspective, are you seeing more alliance contracting, uh, integrated project delivery? Uh, what are you seeing globally uh, around contracting that sort of changes behavior to drive more collaboration and, and create an environment where we can introduce more innovation? Yeah, I am um, so bullish on changes that we're seeing to procurement models around the world. And I must say, you know, Canada has always been uh, a leader in looking at alternative delivery models and alternative procurement models to meet their transportation needs. And we actually share a lot of learnings from the Canadian market to help benefit clients around the, around the world because Canada, Canada continues to lead. But the reason I'm so bullish is because in the transportation industry, we're starting to shift away from that traditional view of the value of projects can be judged on price alone. And we're seeing clients around the world that are saying, you know what, I want to improve social outcomes. I want to best leverage technology. I want to bring in expertise around the world. I want to make sure these projects are safe. I want to make sure that they meet the economic and transportation outcomes that we've set them out to, to deliver. And so they're looking at um, alternative procurement models, if that's alliance contracting, if it is um, uh, project development agreements, that, that where the procurement model reflects uh, the complexity of these major transportation jobs, um, the, the price tag associated with them and the opportunity to bring private capital in and their expertise to help uh, address that and make taxpayer dollars go further. Um, the, the whole host of outcomes, it's great to see clients looking at designing procurement models that, that enable best position the project to meet that whole host of outcomes and not just go to that lowest price um, focus. And Canada has led in that area. We're seeing other clients that are looking at more sophisticated uh, delivery models. Sometimes that's P3, sometimes that's Alliance, sometimes that's other models like PDAs uh, that, are, that are, I think, positioning the, these projects to get better outcomes. The advice that I would give to clients is to work with partners like AECOM very early in the process in that, that initiate, project initiation stage to really say, what is it I'm trying to achieve here? And how do we use some of these new procurement models around the world and best match them to deliver the outcomes that you want to deliver for those projects? Yeah, certainly, you know, if we want to change the behavior uh, to become more collaborative, less adversarial, we have to look at the way we transfer risk or share risk. I think that's really the future uh, and it's going to drive a lot of innovation and, and, um, and collaboration in our market, which is the changes that we need. Uh, Jennifer, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we really do appreciate it. 
and uh, very excited about all the amazing things that you're doing uh, within the organization. Uh, and uh, hopefully we can chat again at, at some point in the future. Great, Tom. Appreciate it very much. And I look forward to talking to you soon. Okay, take care.